A countdown timer, or any kind of timer for that matter, is an incredibly common mechanism in game design. However, while the method of creating a timer and counting it up or down accurately is quite straightforward, actually displaying a time value in different ways, such as in minutes and seconds for example, can be surprisingly tricky. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make a basic timer in Unity, and also show you an easy way to display it as a minutes, seconds and milliseconds value. So in this example I've got a time display, which is just this UI text object. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to count this down from a fixed amount of seconds until it reaches zero. So to do that I'm going to add a script to the object, which I'm going to call timer. So how this is going to work is I'm going to have a public float variable called time value. And I'm going to initialize that at 90 seconds, so a minute and a half. I don't need start. And every frame in update, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract from time value the duration. Oh, whoops. The duration of the last frame, which is time dot delta time. Obviously, every frame takes a different amount of time to process using delta time like this, as with any sort of uh, movement or, or speed related function that you might add, keeps it smooth, it keeps it even, so time's going to count down evenly. And that's it, this is going to start as soon as the, uh, as soon as the scene starts, and it's going to count down time every frame. However, in this example I want to count down from a fixed amount, so what I'm going to do is also add an if condition to check if there's still time remaining. So I'm just going to check if time value is greater than zero, countdown time. Then if there isn't any time remaining, I can add an else condition. And then I can perform a function or do something when there isn't any time left. So for example, I could use this to lock the time value to zero. And I might want to do this because the last frame of the... Um, if the time counting down is probably going to be less than zero, it's probably going to be some small minus number um, as it goes past zero. Uh, and this will just snap it back to zero once it does. Something else I might want to do, if I say want a repeating timer, I could set the time value back to 90 seconds. Uh, although the more accurate way to do this would be to add 90 seconds back on. Again, because the last frame of this going beyond zero will be slightly less than zero, adding the time back on keeps it more accurate. Now, while you wouldn't notice it here, it wouldn't make much difference here, uh, if you're using a timer to control a rapid event like weapon fire, for example, then you might feel some stuttering if you don't do it in this way. Um, it's just ever so slightly more accurate because it takes into account that lost time um, when it goes past zero. In this example, I'm just going to set it back to zero though. So I'm going to save that and go back into Unity. So now what I have is the second value that counts down evenly every frame, which is fine, except what I want to do is show that value in minutes and seconds on the screen. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go back into the script and write a new function called display time. And this is going to take a float value called time to display. I'm going to do this instead of, um, of just reading the time value directly. And the reason for this is because even though I'm setting the timer back to zero when it ends, there is still a brief one frame where it will be less than zero. And I don't want to show that on the time display because it's going to glitch. It's going to glitch on the last frame and then go back to zero. So before I display the time, I'm just going to check to see if it is below zero and then lock it if it's not. So I'm going to write if time display is less than zero. make it be zero. 
Now I can move on to calculating the minutes and seconds values. So the first one I'm going to do is the minutes and I'm going to do that by dividing the time value, which is in seconds, by 60 and rounding it down to the nearest whole number using floor to int. So this is what it looks like. I'm just going to declare a new float, call it minutes and set that to mathf floor to int. This is what rounds it down. And I'm going to take the time to display and divide it by 60, 60 seconds. And that's, that's all I need to do to calculate the minutes, nice and easy. Next, I need to work out the number of seconds in the time value that do not make up a whole minute. So for that, I'm going to use the modulo operation, which is a calculation that returns the remainder after division of one number by another. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to declare a new float, seconds, seconds. And again, I'm going to use floor to int to round it down because it is a float. And then I'm going to take time to display. And then instead of dividing it, I'm going to use the percent symbol, which is modulo in C sharp by 60. Now, what's basically happening here is that the modulo calculation checks to see how many full minutes are in the time value, takes them away and returns whatever's left. So for example, if the time was 90 seconds and I did time modulo 60, I'd get a value of 30 back. There's, there's one lot of 60 in 90 and after that you get 30. Uh, if I did time modulo 60 and the time value was only 50 seconds, there aren't any whole minutes in that and I get 50 back. And uh, this is just a really easy way of taking away what makes up whole minutes and returning just the seconds that are left. So now I have calculations to work out the minutes and seconds. Uh, next, I need to actually add those values to the text object in the game. So it's a text object, so it's a UI object. So I'm going to need to add the using unity engine.ui namespace. And I'm going to add a public text object called time, let's call it time text. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the text value of that object to a new string that uses the minutes and seconds values. So time text dot text equals string dot format, open parentheses, open quote marks. I'm going to open curly brackets, type zero, colon, zero, zero, close curly brackets, colon, open curly brackets, one, colon, zero, zero, close curly brackets. And then I'm going to move past the quote marks, comma, minutes, comma, seconds, semicolon at the end. So let me just explain what's happening here. The values surrounded by curly brackets are parameters, uh, with this one here referring to the minutes and this one here referring to the seconds. So this value to the left of the colon tells you which of these two parameters are going to be used. So zero for the first one minutes, one for the second one seconds. And the value to the right of the colon tells you, it tells you how to format the value. So it's going to be a two digit number by putting two zeros. And that's it. The colon in the middle is just a colon, just to separate the two values like you would see on a digital clock. The last thing I need to do is just add this uh, function so it gets called in update. So I'm just going to call display time and then pass in time value. Save that, go back to Unity. So now back in Unity, I just need to connect the text component to the text variable. And now this should work. So while this now works, there's just one more thing to consider when choosing how to display your time value. And that's that time displays often show different values when you're counting up than when you're counting down. Uh, for example, if you're counting up, as in you're measuring the amount of time that has elapsed with a stopwatch, for example, it will start at zero and then one second will only be shown after one second has actually passed. So 
half a second shows as zero. However, when you're counting down and measuring the time remaining, the last second of the countdown is likely to be shown as a whole second, right up until the point where there's no time left at all. So for example, if you have half a second left, you see one second on the clock. If you have no seconds left, you see zero. This isn't always the case. Uh, for example, Chrome's built-in timer does show time remaining in this way, uh, showing one second remaining during the whole of the last second, uh, while Apple's iPhone timer, unusually, and as far as I can tell, um, rounds to the nearest value, showing zero for half a second at the end of the timer. Uh, what's important is the information that you want to communicate, and I think, for example, that if you want to tell a player that they have a second left, you show them a second, right up until the point when they don't, and then show them zero. Luckily, it's easy to change the timer in this way. All I need to do is add a second on to the time that's displayed when I'm counting it down. So I'm gonna go back into the script and do that now. I'm going to do this as an else if after the if condition here to see if the time is zero. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I don't want to blindly add a second on when the time should actually be zero or if it's less than zero, because if I do that, when the timer stops, it will show one second and not zero. So I'm gonna type else if, time to display is greater than zero, time to display plus equals a second, add a second on. And that's it, that's all I need to do to make that work. So you can see that in the last second, if I pause it, there's about half a second left, but it's showing one. It's worth mentioning that this only really works when you're counting time down and it only really works when you're not showing milliseconds. However, if you do want to show milliseconds in your timer, here's how to do that. I'm gonna go back into the script and I'm going to remove this condition. And just like before, I'm going to declare a new float variable called milliseconds, except I'm not gonna round it down this time. What I am gonna do is take time to display modulo one. So like before where we were taking the seconds that didn't fit into um, a whole minute, now we're taking the float value that doesn't fit into a whole second. And I'm going to multiply that by a thousand just to bring it up to the range where I want to show it. So above the decimal point so that I can show that in the string. Now I can add that into my string format line. So I'm going to add another colon and another parameter two for the third parameter colon, then three zeros, because this is going to be a three digit number, close that parameter, and then add on the end milliseconds. Save that, go back into Unity. And one thing I do need to do with this, because this value here is gonna be moving very fast, and because this font is not evenly spaced, this is gonna move around a lot. So I do just need to align it to the left, and I'm just gonna move it in a bit. And there you go. If you like this video, hit like. Or if you have a tip or a way that you use timers in Unity that you think others would find helpful, put it in the comments below. Let me and everyone else know about it. And I'll see you on the next video.